Welcome back, everybody, to Miss Clicks Demigods D and D Edition. No, the Miss Clicks D and D Demigod Edition. There we go. I was waiting for someone to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Let's oh. pick up where we left off. Uh, War is screaming about the fire, getting close to the library. Uh, Steel is dragging an unconscious body out of the building. Well, has dragged an unconscious body out of the building and is leaving it on the floor. A lot of people are showing up around, and once they hear about fire, the rest of the population goes into a panic and starts grabbing buckets from and running to these water barrels that just line the, not line the streets, but in alleyways all th throughout all cities in medieval times, there were just barrels filled with water for such occasions. Or that's so smart. Or in more in smarter places, they would actually create channels that would run down the sides of streets like little walkways or um little canals that would have water flowing from creeks like freiburg has that stuff in it they're very smart in freiburg but hmm. everywhere else has like uh, barrels of water to prevent fu uh, fires so people hmm. the whole town kind of comes together to put out fires because if one building catches fire it's a danger to the entire city an entire city can go burn down because of fire see london or san francisco <laughs> for more recent uh, such things. or Tokyo yeah so people start trying to put out this fire do you guys join with them or do you move on from this uh, I'm having like zero luck with my waving arms and chasing like I'm I have no hope right I mean the the fire is spread to the living room and that entry room it, that entire room is pretty badly on fire the kitchen is starting what? to catch it was like a little tiny thing yeah, but without you fanning the flames, the areas that had been on fire previously can... Pre or without you putting out that fire, that wood is still hot and ready to pick back up, so that fire can respread pretty quickly. So I go help put out the fire. Okay. Can I get wheel power checks from anyone can who's helping help put out the too, fire? Can I help or is that impossible? Uh, yeah, you can get you can be added to a bucket brigade area. Yeah. You don't need to make a willpower check, but I will in oh, include okay. a bonus for you when I roll their checks. Okay, cool. Um, but Anna and Steph, can I get willpower checks, please? Is Stephanie helping put out the fire, or is she still looking for the rat? I don't know. Are you, Steph? You said I didn't find anything in the room, right? Nope. I'm pulling out the fire. Yeah. I'm a disappointed person. Okay. Luckily for you guys, even though you didn't end up helping all that much, the rest of the town manages to get the fire out before it spreads too far. The library has some damage, mostly smoke, but some books and one of the bookcases is pretty are, are badly damaged. Um, this is a like an hour, hour and a half process to finally put this fire out. And, oh, man. Uh, once it's done, the three, four... Five of you, including Wart, are all gathered out in front of the house while everyone else, you know, after everything calms down, goes back to their own places. Go back to their own places to do their own things. And we have no more Jeremiah. Jeremiah right. is missing. Polymorphed into a rat. Why? Gosh, dang it. Why You're is it always a rat? Right? Huh? You said to who? Wart? Well, I, yeah. I'm an apprentice wizard. <laughs> Can you unblind me? No, I haven't found that spell yet. Do you know where the book is? What book? The spell book. What spell book? <laughs> what is he talking about? The spell book of Jeremiah. Intel like seven. Oh, Jeremiah's. I can't give you that. That's his special spell book. Could you learn the unblinding spell from his spell book? I can't learn those spells. Jer Mr. Master Jeremiah would kill me. He says his books are trapped magically. Well, so anyone trying to open him will be affected by the spells that trap the books. Well, he promised me that if we got him back to this city, I would be unblinded. Now, now, now. You wouldn't be want your master Jeremiah to have lied. So we must find a way to unblind me and find back Jeremiah. Well, then we should probably <laughs> find Jeremiah. I can't cast those spells, and I'm not giving you access to his spell books. Have any of you guys ever seen Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the claymation one? Nope. Oh, you guys suck. Well, Neil's yes. voice sounds exactly like one of the characters, and I wish that you guys... But anyone watching that snowman from the Island of Misfit Toys, that's exactly who he sounds like. Anyways, proceed. Sorry. 
Hmm. We're gonna try to find Jeremiah, but if we can't find him, then you're gonna need to help us out with my blindness. <laughs> I don't need to help you out with anything. Well, your master will be gone. What's the point if we can't find him? Look, I'm just not gonna give you access to his spell books. <laughs> he makes you crack up. I'm you just know. not gonna get hacked. <laughs> well, I'm trying but to do like a teenager's were... voice who's breaking, and I, I'm just not gonna do that anymore. What if we were to just teach the unblinding spell to Adia? She's a wizard. Mm -hmm. I told you, I'm not giving you his spell books. <laughs> Didn't you see us returning with him, saving him from the? I'm not giving you his spell books, and that's vinyl. That would be a massive betrayal. He would turn me into a newt or something if I did well, that. Well, right now he's a rat, so there's well, not much. Well, then we should go find him. Well, then what can you do about it? Do about <laughs> what? Don't you have spells to find him? I'm his apprentice. I'm very new at this. <sighs> it's a jack in the box, not a snowman, and I'm putting it in chat because you sound exactly like him. Oh, that. Yay. <laughs> in which chat? The show chat. Oh, uh, I don't see it. Uh, there. Oh, man. I'll put it in our How chat. How did you guys find him? He's been missing for days. <laughs> exactly. We saved them. We're the good people. And it would be, and we would, we could do much more good if I was not blind as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry about your blindness. I wish there was something I could do, really, but I can't oh, give you yeah, spell like... books. I stopped talking. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Wart, tell us about this uh, seemingly evil wizard that took your master. Telepus the Enchanter? Yeah, that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's a, a nasty guy. He he runs the Unshaken gang around here. The Unshaken gang? Yeah. Who are they? It's a, a group of weird bandits and renegades. I don't even know what much about it, really. <laughs> uh... Jeremiah tries to keep me out of it. He says it's dangerous if I knew too much. But the gist of what I can gather is Telepus and Jeremiah go back kind of far and they had a falling out once upon a time. And ever since then, Telepus has been trying to get Jeremiah's spell books. Hmm. Jeremiah keeps them well hidden so that they can't be found. But I know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking little prick! I, uh, I... I sit down next to him and scoot in real close, and I, I'm i like, you're such a loyal servant to your master to protect his spell book so diligently. The flirt. Oh, the flirt. And I blink at him like this. Is the flirt gonna work? <laughs> <laughs> you see him kind of... Well, can you charisma you know? check real quick? He's a teenager. And I know, I, I know. Hold on. The most and I'm like... Baby. Give, me, give me a charisma check. Do you put your N on his thighs? <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay. All right. He, you actually, let me roll his willpower. Uh, you see him blush for a moment. And kind of turn his head to the side and he goes, ah, thank you. Uh, I don't even know your name, miss. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I like pet his arm. Oh, silly me. My name is Adia, demigoddess, daughter of Luna. Oh, you're, you're a demigoddess. Oh, <laughs> indeed. And a wizard, in fact. I, I guess that explains. And then he just goes silent and turns and like blushes, and it, like a, a moment passes and everyone's just awkwardly looking at him. <laughs> and then he stands up and starts walking. and says, "I gotta, I gotta go do something." And he just like turns his back to you immediately and walks away. <laughs> I look mildly annoyed. You went to 
you're strong too fast. I, 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 <laughs> I just touched his arm. <laughs> now we lost the opportunity. I can't help it if I'm too gorgeous. I mean, teenagers can control themselves. It's how I was born. I can't help it. <laughs> um. Okay, well, we need to find out where Puss Face is. So <laughs> we, we need to find out who knows where Puss Face is. Steel, have you ever heard of Telepis before? <laughs> Steel shakes his head and goes, no. Um, would you like me to talk to the lad? Sure. I, you know what? I, Arcus, maybe you should be the one to do it, actually. What's a lad? Uh, a little boy. boy. Oh, the the guy that just jizzed yeah, in his pants? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Is that what and we lost Anna. <laughs> you put it so delicately. So very euphemistically. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a flower. <laughs> this is a very subtle. Oh, you made me cry. <laughs> Steel goes, I, I don't we... think that's quite what happened, but yeah, I don't think he's ready to deal with with women yet. Maybe if a man talked to him, he would come around. <laughs> okay. Good thing we have that mature rating on our stream. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. So I open the. I knock where he is. Can I come in? It's the guy, the big tall guy with the muscle. What, what can I help you with? <laughs> I just want to chat, you know, men to men. Yeah, come in, come in. Mano to mano. Okay, I'm good. All right, you walk through the, the burned living room. It's pretty badly scorched, you know. There's still smoke in the air, and you see him in the library sitting on one of the reclining chairs there with a book in his hands. <laughs> Covering his book. It's a, a book. A yeah, book in book. his hand, okay. Well, yeah, a book in his lap that he's reading. Okay. I uh, say, so you okay, bro? And then I, I, <laughs> I move my fist because I invented the book. <laughs> so I move my fist towards him. This is a thing uh, we do to say we're okay. You know, you just you just pound the fist and it means you're okay. He so. punches your fist really hard. Yes. And That's it, man. Just hurts his hand <laughs> really badly. <laughs> ow, ow. Why do you pound your fist like that? Ow, that hurts so much. No, gently, gently, man. Just like. You know, well, you like, said pound. I know. Well, I'm <laughs> English moron, okay? <laughs> I guess. All right. So, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I just, I don't know how to talk to girls. It's okay. You'll get used to it. It takes practice. You really think I'll get used to it one day? Yes. Yes, you will. You might even look like me one day. <laughs> if, you, if you try real hard, you know? He frowns and goes, I don't want to look like a meathead. I want to be a great and powerful sorcerer. You can also do that if you want. The future is ahead of you. <laughs> All right. So basically, <laughs> man, you know, again, bro like, to bro, <laughs> bro to bro, mano to mano. <laughs> Let's be real here. You would rather have your um, your sensei die than help him out and give away his book stash. Is that is that like well, a yeah. is That's like the a whole point of hiding things? That he'd ra he'd rather die than give them to anyone. So without his permission, I can't give them to anybody. Okay, so forget about the books. What what can we do to help the little rat here? We need to figure out where he is. We need to help this guy. Okay. Well, he's probably Most... with Telepus. Okay, so we just need to find Telepus. Is that what we need to do right now? I think so. Do you know where Telepus is? Well, Jeremiah knows where he lives, but he always told me not to be there. Yeah, go find it. I've, I've never really looked into it, but maybe someone else in town might know more about it. Okay, There's you a... need to stop. You need to stop being like a you know two step behind right here. He just needs to I'm... step forward. Like it's you know, really like shocking. what can I... we do? Uh... <laughs> There, there's really a, a landed knight that lives outside of town that controls the city. Okay, a knight? Okay, okay. What's his name? Would he protect Jeremiah? 
His name is Sir Fathrak. I, I don't know much about him. Oh, I mean, I, I've lived in this city. I've never met him is what I'm trying. So I, I'm just not used to talking to people. Um, <laughs> You're going to have to get used to it, man. So Sir, Sir, Fath no, no. Sir Fathrak lives outside of the city, uh, just to the south a little bit on the coast. He has a manor over there. He he runs the town, or at least is in charge of it. He mostly leaves us to manage ourselves, but he has a small uh, force of arms and keeps the peace around here. If anyone were to know anything about the Unshaken, it would be him, because since he's in charge of security and stuff. Okay, that's perfect. But first, do you think there is beer? Have you ever had a beer? I think we can go this for a beer. This is not time for beer. Um, I'm blind. Yeah. You cannot hear me. I'm in another room. Oh, sorry. Jeremiah had me whip up a concoction of old dwarven beer. So have you ever had beer ever? Well, I had some when I tried it, but uh. Okay, let, that, let's. That Telepus guy and his friends drank the last of it when they came in uh, here. That's not great. <laughs> Darn you, Telepus! <laughs> okay. On our way to the castle, let's just chug a good beer, just just on our way, okay? You, you'll see, it's it's going to loosen up all your veins. You're going to be more able to talk to people. And who knows, you might talk to uh, my sister over there, and it might go a little bit better than earlier, man. You're going to toughen that up? This time, he manages to control his blush, um, looks around awkwardly for a moment, and then looks straight at you in the eyes and goes, So, your sister... <laughs> me... <laughs> <laughs> you can help with that. I mean, only you can help yourself, but you gotta do a little bit better than that. You know, a good word for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, especially if you help us with the rat, you know, and getting hey, my. He's not a rat. That's my well, master. That's Jeremy. Jeremiah. Jeremy. Yeah, I know. That's that's why we gotta do something. So he's not around anymore. All right. So let's let's chug a beer. Let's you know. Let's find the. I mean. I mean. I mean. Let's find the guy. Not the books. Not that's not what I meant. Okay. <clears throat> do you, let's, do let's you want me to come with you to Sir Fathrax's place? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll meet you outside in a few minutes. I gotta finish reading this section of the book. <laughs> okay, I don't laugh. I'm like, okay, man, I I get it, and I and I and I show the fist. He goes he and very gently bumps it. That's it. That's it. And then I get out of the room. <laughs> okay. Uh, a few right, minutes girls. later, he comes outside carrying okay. the book that he had before. I before he comes outside, I make sure to tell the girls, you know, alcohol showing the books, alcohol showing the books, you know. What? That's why I wanted him to drink, you know, two step ahead, two step. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay, okay, he's coming out now. Okay, he he steps outside and goes, okay, I've got. This book, I, uh, there's a chapter on it about polymorphication that I was reading. That might help us. Yes, that will help us, definitely. I don't know anything about it. Do you, girls? Do I, Neil? Do I, Anna? Neil? Uh, you, Anna, you know a few things about it, but not that much. You've never been, you've never been around when anything's been polymorphed, and you don't know any polymorph spells, but you, you've heard other wizards talk about it before. I I go, oh, you brave and intelligent man. May I please see what you found? Sure. He hands you the book. <laughs> um, his thumb is still in, hold, in between two pages, so you can open it up to the polymorph section. I open it up and read it aloud. Okay. Remember, <clears throat> <laughs> remember. Uh, oh, damn it. Other is page 205. So, you know, the polymorph spell is a powerful magic that completely alters the form, ability, and possibly the personality and mentality of the recipient. Of course, while a creature with lower intelligence can be polymorphed into something with a higher intelligence, it will not gain the creature's mental ability. The reverse, polymorphing a higher intelligence creature into one of significantly lower intelligence, results in a creature much more intelligent than the appearances would lead one to believe. 
The polymorph creature must. Uh, the polymorph creature has a chance to die from the pure shock of altering its body from shape to shape. Whoa. Uh, it is also possible for a creature to lose its personality and mindset and slowly become believe, come to believe it is that creature. The polymorph creature acquires the form and physical capabilities of the creature it has been polymorphed into while retaining its own mind. Forms include natural armor class due to skin toughness but not quickness, magical nature, etc. Physical movements, walking, swimming, and fighting with wings but not plane shifting, blinking, or teleporting. And attack routines, claw by uh, two claws and bite, a swoop, rake, constriction, but not petrification, breath weapons, or energy drain. Uh, hit points and saving throws do not change from the original form. Non-corporeal forms cannot be assumed. Natural shapeshifters, lycanthropes, doppelgangers, higher level druids, etc. are affected but for one round and then can resume their normal form. So if you polymorph a, something that can normally shape change, they can just shape change back. If slain, the polymorph creature reverts to its original form, though it remains dead. Da, 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 da. As class and level or not, attributes of form, abilities from either cannot be gained by the spell, nor can exact abilities, uh, ability scores be specified. When polymorph occurs, the creature's equipment, if any, melts into its new body. The creature retains its mental abilities, including spell use, assuming the new form allows completion of the proper verbal and somatic components and the material components are available. Creatures not used to new a new form might attack with penalties from the DM's option. When the physical change occurs, there is a chance that the subject's personality and mentality change into the new form. For each... for The more intelligent the subject, the less likely they are to lose their mind and think that they are such a creature. Um, um, additionally, if you... Change, uh, polymorphing someone into a more powerful creature, like a, if, for example, if you polymorph a person into a dragon, they are more likely to forget that they were once upon a time a person. If you polymorph them into like lower life form, they are more likely to remember who they were. Um, a subject acquiring the mental the mentality of the new form has effectively become the creature whose form was assumed and comes under control of the DM until recovery by certain spells are possible. When the, chain, the final change takes place, the creature acquires the new form's full range of magical spells and abilities. For example, if an orc of eight intelligence is polymorphed into a white dragon, there is a high chance, about 85%, that the orc actually believes he is a dragon, and then eventually comes into being a dragon. Um, otherwise, he might survive. Wizards can use a dispel magic spell to change the polymorph creature back to its original form. And this requires, again, uh, this also has a chance to kill the creature as its body, you know, shapes changes from one to the other. Those who have lost their individuality and are then converted back to whatever they were previously maintain the belief that they are actually the polymorphed creature and attempt to return to what was before. Thus, the orc who comes to believe he is a white dragon when converted back into his orc form steadfastly maintains that he's really a white dragon polymorphed into the shape of an orc. His <laughs> companions will most likely consider him mad. I read all this with like an air of storytelling and mystery in order to captivate and entertain. Right. Steel says, oh, that wasn't educational. What, what should we do now? <laughs> we need well, to go get this, uh, this knight that supposedly handles security outside this town and he will know where Mr. Puss Mr. Pussy hiding himself, <coughs> transparent or something or whatever, invisible. I mean, running away. Got the rat. Yes. Lead the way, Arcus. Lead the way, our friend. Wart. Wart. Name. Wart. Uh, Which is Wart a very is. Name. Yeah. Poor guy. He's on foot and he starts heading south towards the exit of town. You guys arrive at the manor of the night a little before dusk. So let's say six o'clock-ish. The manor house is built on this uh, raised hill in an otherwise flat area. So you get the impression that the hill is artificially made. The back of it lead, uh, is kind of opens into a little courtyard over a cliff that then descends to the sea. 
and there is a winding path that comes down the hill. The hill is a, probably 100 feet high total and has like a, a fairly steep ramp up to it um, that people would normally walk. And then there's the winding path that switches back and forth so carriages and horses can ascend more slowly. The manor itself is built of stone. It looks like it was designed to be kind of almost a, a smaller <clears throat> castle. There are no windows until you get to the third floor. And the door, it looks to be heavy oak with iron, uh, iron bands across it. <sighs> Is it proper etiquette to just knock? I would Do know. you have an etiquette proficiency? Yep. Oh, you would know that the, the, it is, yeah, you would know that the proper way to do this would be to approach, uh, beg, an, uh, ask or beg, depending on how convincing you want to be. Ask an audience for the Lord inside, and then you'd either be told to wait and be given an audience, or they would tell you to come back another day, or they would just tell you to go to hell. But Bang. pretty much just kind of show up and ask. And... It's like a pretty way of like humbly asking. Like, I beg of you an audience. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, so I knock. I mean, there's a couple of guards outside, so you don't need to actually knock, but... Good sir, I curtsy deeply. Whoa. Without spilling my water. I beg an audience with the lord of the house. What you the may hell's tell with him... your friend? He says, pointing at Emma. <laughs> sir, <laughs> if I were you, I would but be a bit more cautious with my words, for that is the cleric demigoddess Emma, and her eyes glow with the power of a thousand suns. I am Reluna's daughter, I Avia, wink. <laughs> and this is my brother Arcus, also son of Reluna. We're here with our friends Steel and Wart, and I believe it would behoove you to speedily tell your master that we await an audience. Two guards look at one, an one another uncomfortably, and the one that you're speaking to nods slowly and says, okay, um, could you give us just a moment? And slips inside. Uh, I nod you, without saying anything. You hear his feet kind of thundering across the what seems to be a courtyard or um, some sort of stone hallway inside the doorway. Uh, if, if there's anything you guys would like to say to the remaining guard or to each other, you have a few moments now. I don't. I just stare haughtily at him. Haughtily? What does that mean? Like um, you're the shit? Like you're low, uh, yeah. better than everyone okay. else? Like, okay. Mm, I oh, my royal soldier. I follow. I follow again. And I just whisper, look amazing, Emma. <laughs> I, I move my hair backwards and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> strobe lighting everyone in the room. <laughs> yeah, I totally... Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing a stroboscope thing. <laughs> it's like a freaking nightclub in here. <laughs> yeah, the the sun is starting to go down over the hillsides to the west, and so Emma's eyes are starting to provide like a, a little cone of light for you guys wherever she looks as the sun goes down. They're like, well, <laughs> this is useful. Maybe we should keep her that way. Yeah. <laughs> a few minutes pass, and the guard returns, opens the door, and admits you guys in takes you to a what seems to be some sort of audience chamber deep within the manor on the second floor uh, and in the audience chamber there's a kind of a heavy duty chair made out of iron with uh, green like a green fabric for the cushion and the backing uh, and as you are walking to the chamber a tall man who's you know six one ish fairly broad shouldered, with armor on, um, just just a breastplate, really, nothing else. He's got a long sword at his side. Walks up to the chair, takes you know, undoes his sword from the belt, set, leans it against the hand armrest of the chair, and sits down. He has a very stern face, with narrow eyes and a kind of like a perpetual frown. He seems to be kind of just a grumpy man in general, but he also looks to be in pretty good shape. Uh, early 30s, maybe late 20s, but uh, something along that for age. Short brown hair, brown eyes, uh, nice clothing, 
but the armor seems to be the most attractive thing. It kind of like shines in light and bounces. Uh, the light that emanates from Emma's eyes. He sits down <laughs> and says, So, we have a band of self-proclaimed demigods and follow... God, get that light out of my eyes. Turn your head, woman. He shouts at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I curtsy deeply. But seriously. Mm -hmm. and I, I turn yes. into little bits after doing it. Like, <laughs> I look pissed off. I'm like, this is stupid. Okay. <clears throat> Why don't you better. close your eyes? <laughs> I am Adia. That is actually, Arcus. Hold on. Do you actually say, why don't you close your eyes? No. <laughs> yes. I, I yes. actually say it, but let me say it, but like mumbly. You say I'm it under your it breath. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying it in a mumbly way. Because okay. I feel like it's more... <laughs> I wouldn't be, like, in your face, <laughs> but I'd be, like, back. still, like, complaining. Um, hold on. Well, he rolls a 31 on his perception check, so he actually hears you. And goes, watch your mouth. I can have you thrown in the brig for that. You know, keep your head pointed to the side so you don't blind us in here. I hear the rest of you are demigods. And you want my help with something? Speak now. Thank you, good sir. We indeed search for information. Our friend Jeremiah the wizard has been taken by the vile scoundrel Telepus. We search for his location so that we may bring him to justice, rescue our friend, and bring overall peace back to this region. Mm hmm. We were wondering if you might be able to help us with any information about his location and or any aid you may care to offer. Telepus, eh? I can't say I rightly remember the name off the top of my head. Who is this guy? Uh, he seems to be a rival wizard of some kind, and I described him. Hmm. Also, he's a leader of a gang. Oh, right, yeah. He leads the, uh, what, Arcus, what did you say it was? It's the blah, blah, blah gang, right? Wart, or whatever your name is. <laughs> Wart goes, they're called the Unshaken. Unshaken. No, <laughs> unshaken. Like, unshaken. <laughs> and Sir Fathrak sits in his chair and nods solemnly, uh, expecting you guys to continue your story. Uh, Wart, is there anything else you know about Telepus that you may share? This is this is Wart, the apprentice of Jeremiah the Wizard. Wart kind of meekly smiles and then shuffle steps to step, kind of stand behind Steel a little bit. There's nothing else, Wart. No, I think that's it. So. We search for any information about the Unshaken, Telepus, Jeremiah the Wizard, uh, or any aid you may be able to offer us in the search. The man kind of pauses and seems to be also, lost in thought for a moment. Mm -hmm. We would also help you, because apparently these guys are bad guys, and apparently you do security around here, right? So we would get rid of them. Do mm -hmm. security? And I turn around to ward, like, <laughs> this is my town. I own it. I own the lands oh. around it. Oh. These are my people. Well, these the, the gang is causing trouble. So yes. we we just want to stop that, you know. Yes, yes. Well, I side. haven't heard of them myself. I don't know of this Telepus man nor of these unshaken ridiculous name that that is. <laughs> I agree. However, I can ask around for you. If you can do something for me. And what would that be, sir? There is a... A crypt outside. Down the hill and south a little ways is my family crypt. When my father died, the... He had some... He had some enemies. And when he died and we entombed him there, 
they cursed the crypt. I can no longer enter, and my <clears throat> reign here is... My, my rule is undispu indisputable and undisputed, but still, I the symbol of rule for this region, or for this city, is my father's sword. And it is locked in the crypt with him. The ceremony to give it to me has been blocked by this curse placed on the crypt. If you could return my father's sword to me, if you can somehow find a way of breaking the curse and getting the sword back, I would gladly help you with any information that you need regarding these unshaken and this man Telepus. What a nice coincidence! We have one of our trio here that is really comfortable with death. Right? <laughs> Good. Right, Emma? Yeah. Ching. But I'm blind. Sadly, I'm blind, so I can't do much right now, you see. Emma because does. I don't. I don't see shit. Don't listen to her. She's really, really depressive right now since she <laughs> lost since she lost her eyes. So I gotta I, just go still, like she still has all her powers. Don't don't listen to her. Do you happen to know any remedy for a uh, blindness curse such as has been placed upon our friend Emma because she would be of great help in that crypt. I'm no sage. However, I find the wizard who cursed you and he can uncurse you. That's Mr. Puss. No, that's not him. No, it was a were-rat. I'm pretty we, sure. Yeah, we killed him. The no, were-rat blinded a her. Goblin dude. They were really skilled where at. No, it was a little dude. It was a brownie. Yeah, was one brown of the brownies. A brownie? One of the little I guys don't... that were hopping around, running around. Oh, yeah. They little were little so buttons. cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, <clears throat> we'll accept your deal. We will break the curse on this crypt. But in the meantime, it is of the utmost importance that we begin immediately the search for our friend, Jeremiah. So... If you will agree to make inquiries immediately, we will immediately get to your crypt and work on uncursing it. Bring me the sword and I will have your information for you. Fair enough. Thank you. And I curtsy deeply and walk away. Um, oh, but except uh, I asked him where the crypt is and stuff first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he told you it's south of the town. Uh, south of his manor. It's a, one of these burial mounds. You get the full details. As you guys start to turn to leave, he says, um, actually, you there, miss. Which one? He points to you as you look back over your shoulder. Me? Yeah. Would you yes. stay a moment while the others leave? I nod regally. Okay. Everyone else shuffles out, and he stands up and walks over to you, just kind of silent and looking, like inspecting you as if like trying to figure out who you are you know get one of those like deep like who is this person looks and he starts to walk kind of like around you looking at you uh and then walks up to you and closely and puts his hand on the opposite shoulder uh that he's standing next to leans in closely and whispers into your ear you know i have other uses for you before he kisses you on the cheek i <clears throat> laugh at him as Can if you give me fool. the sort of laugh that you would do? <laughs> and walk away. Okay. You just turn and walk at that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I, I guess like, you don't see ultimately anything. Ultimately scoff right. and walk away. All right. You, you walk out and that's it. We are at a great breaking point. So we should go to our break before our last hour for this week. And we'll see what the story has in hold for us then. See you guys soon.